me we come, O oh Lord our God. in this holy sacrifice. And now, I ask that you please make an examination of your conscience. And now let us all recite the second act of confession. I confess to Almighty God, one in the Holy Trinity, in the presence of the Blessed Virgin Mary, all the saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, that I have sinned in thought, word, and deed, by my fault, by my fault, by my own great fault, I ask the Blessed Mother Mary, all the saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. For your penance for the next three nights, besides saying your evening prayers, to reflect upon one of the three readings as prescribed by the church this day. May Almighty God have mercy upon us, forgive us our sins, and bring us unto life everlasting. Amen. May the Almighty and merciful Lord grant us pardon, absolution, and remission of our sins. Amen. May our Lord Jesus Christ absolve you and with his authority. Vested in me by him, I absolve you of your sins. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. O God, you will again renew us. Amen. Show us your mercy, Lord. Amen. Lord, hear our prayer. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Let us pray. Take our sins away from us, Lord, so that we might enter the Holy of Holies with purified hearts through Christ our Lord. Amen. Indeed, the Word of God is living and effective, sharper than any two-edged sword, penetrating even between soul and spirit, joints and marrow, and able to discern reflections and thoughts of the heart. Where he made his flesh and made his dwelling among us, and we saw his glory, the glory that is of the Father's only Son, full of grace and truth. Glory be to the Father and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Glory to whom God is the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, Almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the 
Most High Jesus Christ with the Holy Spirit in the glory of God the Father. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lord our God, you speak through Christ, who speaks through us. Nourish us with your word and sacraments. Cause us to bring forth fruit worthy of your labor, and keep us fit for the coming harvest. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Josh, would you proclaim the word today? The liturgy of the word of God, a reading from Isaiah the prophet. Thus says the Lord, just as from the heavens the rain and snow come down and do not return there until they have watered the earth, making it fertile and fruitful, giving seed to the, one, for, to the one who sows and bread to the one who eats, so shall my word be that goes forth from my mouth. My word shall not return to me void, but shall do my will, achieving the end for which I want it. I sent it. The word of the Lord. The gradual. You have been born anew, not from perishable, but from imperishable seed, through the living and abiding word of God. A reading from the letter of St. Paul the Apostle to the Romans. I consider that the sufferings of this present time are nothing compared with the glory that will revealed for us. For creation awaits with eager expectation. The revelation of the children of God, for creation was made subject to futility, not of its own accord, but because of the one who subjected it, in hope that creation itself would be set free from slavery to corruption and share in the glorious freedom of the children of God. We know that all creation is groaning in labor pains, even until now, and not only that, but we ourselves, who have the first fruits of the Spirit, we also groan within ourselves as we wait for adoption the redemption of our bodies. The word of the Lord. Thanks. You have been born anew, not from perishable, but from imperishable, through the living and abiding word of God, rather blessed are those who hear the word of God and observe it. Alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia, alleluia. The seed is the word of God which is now at work in you who believe. Alleluia, alleluia. Almighty and eternal God, who cleanse the lips of the prophet Isaiah with a burning coal, cleanse my heart and my lips through your gracious mercy that I may worthily proclaim your holy gospel through Christ our Lord. Amen. May the Lord be in my heart and on my lips, that I may worthily proclaim his holy gospel. Amen. The Lord be with you. Reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew. On that day, Jesus went out of the house and sat down by the sea. Such large crowds gathered around him that he got into a boat and sat down, and the whole crowd stood along the shore. And he spoke to them at length in parables, saying, a sower went out to sow, and as he sowed, some seed fell on the path, and birds came and ate it up. Some fell on rocky ground where it had little soil. It sprang up at once because the soil was not deep, and when the sun rose, it was scorched, and it withered for lack of roots. 
Some seed fell among thorns, and the thorns grew up and choked it. But some seed fell on rich ground and produced fruit, a hundred or sixty or thirtyfold. Whoever has ears ought to hear. The disciples approached him and said, Why do you speak to them in parables? He said to them in reply, Because knowledge of the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven has been granted to you, but to them it has not been granted. To anyone who has, more will be given, and he will grow. From anyone who has not, even what he has will be taken away. This is why I speak to them in parables, because they look but do not see, and hear but they do not listen or understand. Isaiah's prophecy is fulfilled in them, saying, which says, You shall indeed hear but not understand, you shall indeed look but never see. Rose is the heart of this people, they will hardly hear with their ears, they have closed their eyes, lest they see with their eyes, and hear with their ears, and understand with their hearts, and be converted, and I heal them. But blessed are your eyes, because they see, and your ears, because they hear. Amen, I say to you, many prophets and righteous people long to see what you see, but did not see it, and to hear what you hear but did not hear it. Hear then the parable of the sower. The seed sown on the path is the one who hears the word of the kingdom without understanding it, and the evil one comes and steals away what was sown in his heart. The seed Sown on rocky ground is the one who hears the word and receives it at once with joy. But when he has no root, it lasts, and lasts only for a time. When some tribulation or persecution comes because of the word, he immediately falls away. The seed sown among thorns is the one who hears the word, but then worldly anxiety and the lure of riches choke the word and it bears no fruit but the seed sown on rich ground is the one who hears the word and understands it who indeed bears fruit and yields a hundred or sixty or thirty fold the gospel of the Lord praise be to you Lord Jesus Christ To you, my dear brothers and sisters in Christ Jesus, we do not know when mankind first, first reached out to God in prayer, in supplication, and asking for blessing. In our most recent bulletin, I had a section that dealt with sacred scripture. There has been an evolution of religion, starting with the non-Western religions of Hinduism and Buddhism. Later, 
the Western religions of Judaism, Christianity, and Islam. In the Eastern religions of Hinduism and Buddhism, there is a belief in many gods. In the Western religion, we say that these three religions, which has a common link of Abraham, are what we would call monotheistic religions, the belief in one God. Each and every single religion has a truth found in their Holy Scripture. Depending upon the time, the generation, and the area in which that religion came forth. In our Judeo-Christian tradition of a monotheistic religion, Moses received the revelation of God on Mount Sinai. And he put forth what is known as the Torah, the law, which is the basic understanding of man's relationship to God. In Islam, the prophet Muhammad received the revelation of God in the cave where he gathered for a spiritual retreat. <coughs> Christianity, for our understanding, stands alone. It is the fulfillment of the revelation of Moses. And I want you to concentrate on words that are found in the Gospel of John, where he speaks of the identity of the one true God. We understand the term word, and word is very important. Words have been said to bring peace, and words have been sent, said to bring war. Words have been said to bring love, and words have been used to express anger and hatred. And so words are very important. We know that in the Judeo-Christian tradition, that among the Jews, they are not able to even pronounce the name of God because it is that sacred. In reading of the text, they cannot touch the word of God, but rather has to use what is known as Yad, which is an extension of like a silver hand in which they are able to read scripture. Again, Christianity, for my path in this life, as I'm sure that it is for each and every single one of you who have been baptized into the faith, the Word became flesh. Think about it. The Word of God that made heaven and earth became flesh and dwelt among us. They were those who witnessed the Word. For Jesus represented the only begotten Son of God who revealed the Word of God. And just as John and the other apostles made the declaration that he dwelt among us, even at the times of the writing of the Gospels, there were those who were still alive that remembered what the Lord had said in teaching. We are fortunate that we have before us Holy Scripture. And it is a template by which we understand through the words of Jesus, the Word made flesh, the Creator. 
How sad. That people spend more time reading newspapers and watching television than actually picking up a Bible. This is why what I try to do every single week is to put forth the Word. So even if you don't have a Bible, even if you don't choose to open your Bible, if you have one, you have the Word of God before you. Jesus talked about the sower. And the seed is sown. Whenever you hear the Word of God, a lot of it depends now upon the soil that you have. Jesus gave three examples of the seed that was sown and was consumed, whether it be by the birds or a lack of foundation or the cares of the word, world. And it is only in the last example where we read that those who receive the word within their heart that thought of more than the riches and the pleasures of life, that had depth in their foundation, and stood fast in their faith, that Word of God produced, as it is said, a hundred, a sixty, or thirty-fold. And so, my dear brothers and sisters, May we rely upon the Word of God as a direction in which we are to go. Whether we are saddened by an unavoidable death or glad about the blessings that God gives unto us through sickness and anger and all the things of the emotions that all mankind experience, it is the Word of God that brings healing. It is the Word of God that brings compassion. It is the Word of God, the Word of God that brings love and fellowship with one another. And so, trust in the Lord, for in His Word there is mercy, and with Him is plenteous redemption for all. Amen. In the name of the Father and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. May the name of Jesus Christ be praised by all of us now and forevermore. Amen. I believe and walk upon God, the Father, the Almighty, Maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us and for our salvation. He came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he was born of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in fulfillment of the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. For everything created by God is good. And nothing is to be rejected when received with thanksgiving, for it is made holy by the invocation of God in prayer.
gifts of love and sacrifice may truly be accepted by God our Heavenly Father. Amen. Let us pray, Heavenly Father. We set bread and wine before you as a sign that we are yours and that our love for you is real. Transform us by the power of your word to rejoice in our new life, to serve our brothers and sisters, and to praise your holy name. We ask in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. Thanks unto the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. Father, all powerful and ever living God, we do well always and everywhere to give you thanks through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Through his teaching and ministry, Jesus showed us how we are to live giving our lives in service to you and to all people. Still hearing his word in our world today, we strive to follow his example and set our hearts on the world to come. Therefore we he join this day with the voices of angels and archangels, with all the saints and his entire church, and we lift our hymn of praise to your glory, repeating unceasingly. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the heights. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the heights. Please be seated. Most merciful Father, we most humbly pray and ask you through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, to accept and to bless these gifts, these presents, these holy and spotless sacrifices which we offer to you in the first place for your holy Catholic Church, that you would guide it in peace, defense, and unity throughout the whole world with its bishops and priests, especially Anthony, our prime bishop, Paul, our bishop, and all who profess the true orthodox and Catholic faith which comes to us from the apostles. Remember your servants, O Lord. And all here present whose faith and devotion are known to you, for whom we offer, who offer up to you the sacrifice of praise for themselves and all their own, for the hope of salvation and deliverance and who freely choose to serve you, the living, eternal, and true God, we join in communion with and honor above all others the memory of Mary, the glorious Virgin Mother of our Lord and God, Jesus Christ. Also, your blessed apostles, martyrs, and confessors, together with all the countless number of saintly men and women of all nations, but especially of our nation, who lived, suffered, and died for the glory of your name and the coming of your kingdom. May the remembrance of these praiseworthy people encourage us to follow their heroic example, making us worthy of your grace and love through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. We ask you, Lord, to graciously accept our offering of that of your whole family, and so order our days in your peace, that we may be saved from spiritual damnation and counted among the flock of your chosen people through Christ, our Lord. Amen. O oh God, we ask you to bless, to accept, and to confirm this offering and make it pleasing unto yourself so that it may be filled with the power of the Holy Spirit and become for us the body and the blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. The day before suffering and death in order to manifest his infinite love to his disciples and through them to all who believe in him, to fill the hearts of his followers with the fire of this love, draw them to himself, make them joyful and save them, 
He instituted these holy mysteries in which spiritually and bodily in his entire being he again lives among his people. At that sole moment so sacred for the whole human family, our Savior took bread into his holy and venerable hands and having lifted his eyes to heaven to you, God, his almighty Father, and giving thanks to you, he blessed it, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat it, for this is my body, which is given for you. In like manner, after supper, taking this excellent chalice into his holy and venerable hands, again giving thanks to you, he blessed it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the cup of my blood, the blood of the new and everlasting covenant, which shall be shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. As often as you do this, do it in remembrance of me. Therefore, in remembrance of this Christ, your Son, our Lord, and his blessed passion, resurrection, and his glorious ascension, we, your servants and faithful people, offer to your divine majesty from your own gifts and presence a pure offering, a holy offering, an immaculate offering, the holy bread of eternal life, and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to regard these offerings with favor and joy and accept them as you receive the gifts of your just servant Abel, the sacrifice of our patriarch Abraham, and that which your high priest Melchizedek offered you, a holy sacrifice in immaculate host. We humbly ask you, Almighty God, command that this offering be brought by the hands of your holy angel to your high altar into the presence of your divine majesty, that we who receive the most sacred body and blood of your Son from this altar may be filled with every blessing and grace through the same Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord, remember your servants, and especially today, for Bishop Yaroslav Rofalko, who has gone before us with the Son of Faith, and who now sleeps in peace. To these souls, Lord, and all who rest in Christ, Grant, we pray, a place of refreshment, light, and peace through the same Christ, our Lord. Amen. And grant us, your sinful servants, who hope in the greatness of your mercy, some part in fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs and all your saints who shed their blood for your name. Their hearts were always open to justice and mercy and with lives patterned after their divine master merited eternal joy. Number us in their company, Lord, not weighing our merits, but pardoning our offenses. Through Christ our Lord, amen. By whom you always create, sanctify, revive, bless, and freely give us all these good things. Through him, with him, in him. All honor and glory are yours, almighty Father, in the unity with the Holy Spirit. Forever and ever. Amen. Let us pray, instructed by our Savior's <coughs> teaching, uh, and following the divine example, we say with confidence, Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, Lead us not. 
us into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, from all evils, past, present, and future, and by the intercession of the blessed and glorious Mother of God, Mary, together with your blessed apostles, Peter and Paul, and also Andrew, and all the saints, grant us peace in our day. Supported by the help of your mercy, may we always be free from sin and secure from all disturbance through the same Jesus Christ, your Son and our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit. Forever and ever. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. May this commingling and consecration of the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ help us to receive an everlasting life. Amen. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, I leave you peace, my peace I give you. Look not upon our sins, but upon the faith of your church. And all safe to grant it peace and unity of your kingdom, for you live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of the living God, by the will of the Father and the work of the Holy Spirit, your death brought life to the world. By your holy body and blood, free us from all our sins and from every evil. Keep us faithful to your teaching and never let us be parted from you, who lives and reigns God forever and ever. Amen. May the partaking of your body and blood, Lord Jesus, not be cause for our judgment or condemnation. Though we are unworthy to receive this great sacrament, through your loving kindness, may become our safeguard and healing remedy. Our saving master, awaken in us living faith, fervent love, worship, adoration, and a holy longing. Through this communion, make us your willing servants, zealous to fulfill your holy will. May it at last unite us entirely with you, our Lord and our God. God. Grant us who lives and reigns with God the Father, in the unity with the Holy Spirit forever and ever. Amen. We will take the bread of heaven and we will call upon the name of the Lord. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word and I shall be healed. May the body of our Lord Jesus Christ preserve my soul unto life everlasting. Amen. What shall I return unto the Lord? For all the graces he hath rendered unto me, I will take the chalice of salvation, and I will call upon the name of the Lord. With high praise will I call upon him, and I shall be saved from all my enemies. May the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ preserve my soul unto life everlasting. Amen. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but I am not worthy to receive you.
bread alone does man live, but by every word that comes forth from the mouth of the Lord. The Lord be with you. Word of God, you are the bread of life that comes forth from the Most High to nourish our starved soul. May we hunger for you and be forever satisfied. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. The Lord be with you. Sacrifices are offered. May the tribute of our worship be pleasing to you, most holy Trinity. Grant that the sacrifice which we, though unworthy, have offered up into the sight of your majesty be acceptable to you. Through your mercy may be effective for ourselves and all those for whom we have offered it through Christ our Lord. Amen. May the Almighty and merciful God bless you the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. In the beginning was the Word. The Word was in God's presence, and the Word was God. He was present to God in the beginning. Through Him all things came into being, and apart from Him nothing came to be. Whatever came to be in Him found life life for the light of men. The light shines on in the darkness, a darkness that did not overcome it. There was a man named John sent by God who came as a witness to testify to the light, so that through him all might believe, but only to testify to the light, for he was not the light. The real light which gives light to every man was coming into the world. He was in the world, and through him the world was made, yet the world did not know who he was. To his own he came, yet his own did not accept him. Any who did accept him, he empowered to become children of God. These are they who believe in his name, who were begotten not by blood, nor by carnal desire, nor by man's willing it, but by God. The Word became flesh and made his dwelling among us, and we have seen his glory, the glory of an only Son coming from the Father, filled with enduring love. Thanks be to God. Thank you. 